Hey everybody, it's David Herring. Welcome to another episode of Provider Smart, brought to you by CNSG, an app smart company. And today we have our good friend, AJ Kupthick with Expedient. AJ, how are you? Doing great, David. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. We're going to talk about Expedient. We have a great partnership with you through CNSG. Talk about some resources, some new things going on with your products. But first, let's talk a little bit about how you got into your IT space. How, like what, what started? How did that all evolve? How did you end up becoming an engineer and the chief technologist today at Expedient? I mean, it, it, it started when I was a kid. Uh, I'm fairly young. So I started and everything was generally, you know, all about computers when I was in like fifth grade, sixth grade, something like that. Nice. And I That's just started fixing stuff as a kid. And once I got to high school, uh, I actually got a job inside the school district fixing computers. And it's really weird when you're in high school and then they're asking you to build the wireless network for your school. Uh, this was pre IT security being the whole thing that it is now. They would never have let me done that now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, building the high built wireless networks. Uh, I was imaging laptops. I was doing PC support, right? Yeah. Uh, went cool to college. Uh, went off to college. Uh, got I worked in the computer labs inside the college, uh, and I had a professor. Shout out to Doctor uh, uh, Doctor Caputo out of Robert Morris University, who uh, told me that I was an idiot uh, if I didn't go take the uh, internship test. Uh, for U.S. Steel. Nice. He literally told me you're an idiot, which I appreciated so much. Yeah. Um, and I had to get up at like 8 a.m. on a Saturday to go do it, which was the whole part reason I didn't want to take it. Uh, yeah. Ended up passing the test, got an internship at U.S. Steel and started doing PC support in a steel mill. Uh, that it's is a very great. different thing from a, from a, uh, from a uh, high school. Um, did PC support. Uh, did server support, networking support. I learned a ton in that job on how to operate in different areas and how they all kind of intertwine. Yeah. Um, you were really in the trenches. I mean, that's pretty cool. Like you start, that's where you started. And, and I think our partners will really, expect, you know, they'll really respect that. They love that. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where, you know, I didn't just, I'm not just coming into this from a pure, you know, marketing standpoint, from a pure, uh, you know, sort of, I just came into this field. I've been yeah. doing this since I was like 15. Yeah. Um, I've seen a whole lot. I've seen a whole bunch of different industries. I've worked in healthcare. I've worked in manufacturing. I've worked in retail. That's um, great. And I worked in the partner space as well. So I worked as a delivery engineer for a VAR for three and a half years. That's um, great. And then made my way back into the customer world. And now I'm here at Expedient. So, and just think about that. Like, I, I think, uh, shout out to my mentor, Coach Jenkins. Like, I, I had, you and I had the same thing. I think a lot of us do, right? At a very young age, somebody kind of pushed us a little. And that's where, you know, and here we are today, you know, and I bet you you're a mentor to someone today. So that's kind of cool. I, um, I try I try my best to pay it forward. I think that's that's yeah. really important is to actually sit down and take the time and, and, and do that and pay it forward because sometimes they'll give you pieces of information that you didn't know. Maybe they're more of an expert on a newer technology than, uh, than you've been, than you've been exposed to because you just haven't yeah. gotten it yet. So. That's really beautiful. Good stuff. So let's, that takes us to, to the very beginning, really. Let's right. get to Expedient. How did you get to Expedient and where are you with them today? Uh, so I, I came over to Expedient uh, at the end of 2019, actually, uh, right around the middle of December. Uh, I've known Expedient for a while. Uh, I've been friends with a number of people here based, you know, through company events. Uh, Devin Cole has been going to all of these various events. No, seen Devin, well. Wow. He's seen my silly face at all of these various things. Um, so getting to know people at Expedient, uh, continue, you know, just networking and that sort of thing. And uh, some an opportunity came about where, you know, they were looking for someone to fill this sort of role, to fill more of a public speaking, technical marketing sort of role. Um, so I, I, you know, said, hey, I'd like to do that. And we went through the whole process and now I'm here. That's great. And the channel so needs that. The channel community needs the technical side of this more than you know. It's a great niche and it's a great role. So let's talk a little bit more deeply about Expedient. So what are you, what's your sweet spot? What's something really, what's the perfect customer and what our partners need to look for to help your team? So our, our perfect customer is the customer who is doing too much. The customer who's spending a lot of time spinning their wheels, maintaining their existing platform, but they want to do more. They keep hearing about this cloud thing. They keep hearing about where this whole market is going, but they're not entirely sure where to go. 
and they're staring at their existing legacy applications. They're staring at their existing applications they have on their platform and thinking to themselves, well, none of these are really great fits over here in a, in a hyperscale cloud in AWS and Azure. They might be. We could probably shove them in there, but is that the right fit for them? And when we sit down and talk with customers, we, we help them understand that not every cloud is Amazon, not every cloud is Azure. There's also VMware powered enterprise clouds and that's what we have. So uh, our stack is entirely based on the VMware infrastructure. So if you're talking to a customer that is a heavy VMware shop, they want to do more. They're constantly bumping their heads up against uh, resources, getting more resources faster. Um, they're looking at cloud saying, hey, we want to do those things, but we're not sure how to do them. Um, we, we like to call this the ACCF problem. Yeah, uh, We talk about you know, looking at the work that our customers are doing. And when that sort of comes up, we talk through that and they say, you know, well, we spend a lot of our time, you know, patching hosts and doing change controls and maintaining the platform. We refer to that as CF work, right? It's like a grading scale. C to F means if you do your job well, you get a C. You, that's what you're supposed to do. If you do it poorly, you get an F and you fail, you get fired. But our customers want to do a C work where if they do their job well, they get an A, they get kudos, they get you know recognized for the work that they did. And if they don't do it well, they get a C because there was an effort to try and do something better. Yeah. And so we That's see that with a lot of customers, they want to get into that. They want to be that business partner, but they can't get out of their own way to actually have the time to go do that. So they end up working 80 hour weeks. So we wanna help customers take that time and put that time back on their plate. And we take over that infrastructure and maintain that for them. They get the cloud experience without having to completely refactor all their applications. That's great. What a, what a great definition. You, you have to, can you trademark that ACCF? Can you, is there any uh, way? No, <laughs> we, can't, we can't trademark it. It's something that uh, I believe uh, one of our sales members heard yeah. and brought that to kind of the rest of the team. And we all kind of went, oh, that's actually a really great explainer for yeah. what a lot of our customers are going through. So let's talk about legacy. So you have legacy, you had customers on legacy apps. We talked a little bit about this in the interview, pre-interview. You talked about yesterday, today, tomorrow. That was really cool. Explain that a little bit to our partners. So when we talk to customers, they're staring at these legacy apps, right? They have mainframes, AIX, HPUX. They have all of these technologies that are not exactly the most modern and cool technologies. They're not the most cloud native technologies. Um, IBM is trying so very hard to make mainframe cloudy, um, yeah. but they struggle with that just as much as everybody else does. And so what we do is we help customers understand that not everything has to be, you know, super cloud native, containerized, those sorts of things. We recognize that applications, once they come into a company, they have a tendency to not go away unless there's something so overwhelmingly better that the business wants to go to and they're willing to rip out this critical application. Other than that, these applications stick around forever. My experience in healthcare, in manufacturing and in retail is that once something comes in, it, it, it's, it's like a cockroach. The only thing that it's going to it's going to survive a nuclear explosion. Yeah. So yeah. when we go and talk to customers, we help them understand that this application doesn't fit in a big hyperscale cloud. That meter is constantly running. And so when this application is not doing anything on a Saturday, you're still paying for that application to be up and running. So we help them understand, hey, let's help you move this into a VMware powered enterprise cloud. Let's land it with a predictable monthly cost. And then here's our co-location space. We started as a colo provider. So we're able to come in and say, hey, this physical asset that you can't get rid of, that is still like the driving force of your business, you can put that right next to our cloud. If you try to do that with a hyperscale cloud, you have to get into point of presences with Equinix, with any other you know, major telco. You have to go into one of their cap their racks, their cabinet, their colo. A lot to of work. And get a lot of work. Yeah. Right. And it's a lot of work and it's not integrated, right? The what our colo space and our cloud are the same company, the same team. So for us, we can help design it completely end to end versus saying like, yeah, here's your application. It's probably gonna call back to this legacy app and you can put that in a point of presence, whatever, you can figure that out. We don't wanna do that to our customers. We want to sit down and work with them on how to build the cloud that they need. So yeah. that's where we can put that together along with our new cloud native platform, which is container-based Kubernetes, uh, Portworx and Elastic, those three, you know, uh, Rancher, Portworx and Elastic, excuse me, uh, that form this overall platform. 
So we can build a true container-based platform on top of our VM platform, sit it next to the physical platform so you can have your legacy apps, current apps, and next generation apps all together, or as I call it, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yeah, so we can put really all cool. of that together in one space and maintain it as one singular platform. So it helps our customers do what they need to do today and keep the lights on while at the same time starting to build their future. This is great. That's great stuff. And I think what I'm hearing there, AJ, and it's it's really important for our, the CNSG partners to think about is make IT a competitive advantage with Expedient. Yep. Like you're going to help them do that, right? We're going to help you get out of the business of maintaining all of these platforms. It's yeah. a massive time sink. If you think about how much time you spend on OS patching, host patching, uh, DR, backups, building on a container platform, all of these things are things that take massive amounts of time to first build and then maintain. Uh, we build everything to enterprise scale. We have almost 40,000 VMs running on our platform right now. So we're capable of building gigantic platforms. We have thousands of VMs inside of our DR platform. So we're able to migrate those very, very quickly. We have one of the fastest DR platforms in the industry. So for us, it's less about the actual technologies themselves and more about the solutions and outcomes that those enable, right? We have, yeah. a, we have a customer that... Um, Obviously, everybody's, you know, thinking about uh, the hurricane that's happening right now in, yeah. in, you know, Louisiana and the Texas border. But we have a customer that had a, uh, they, they have their office in Florida. Florida gets a lot of hurricanes. And so they partner with us on their push button, on our push button DR platform. They do DR proactively. They don't wait for the hurricane to show up. They yeah. hit the DR button because it's so seamless. Flip over to our Memphis data center get out of the way of the hurricane and they send all their people home. That's yeah. a powerful story. That has nothing to do with the technology. That has nothing to do with the actual, you know, capabilities and the ins and outs and knobs of the platform and more about what it's actually enabling. It's enabling their staff to be safe, to be at home with their families while maintaining the business, which is an insurance company. They are kind of important post hurricane, right? Sure, so sure. there's gonna be a lot of claims, there's gonna be a lot of contact back to the insurance company on damage. So they need to be available the moment the hurricane goes through. So when we're starting, what we've done is we've been able to deliver the availability that they need. They get to protect their staff and not have to maintain any of that platform. So That's there's right. a lot of different capabilities that you get there and it doesn't have anything to do with you know what product or what technology we're using to do that. Yeah, and I think that's great. And I think that in this, this, I mean, that this video will be out for, you know, for a long time. I'll, I'll just explain to the viewers, it's, this is Hurricane Laura, and we really are. Today, today's the day. I'm willing to bet a lot of the Expedient customers, they already had that plan in place long before Laura hit. And they yeah. had a game plan, you know? Yeah, I mean, if you go through, what we like to do is we like to actually sit down and talk through DR. Uh, a lot of our customers come in uh, the first for DR, because we are a colo data center, we are a uh, DR target data center. So we are capable of doing that for your on-premises technologies as well. So a lot of customers come to us first looking for that. And then they find, oh, hey, they actually have a cloud too. Oh, hey, they can do managed operating systems. Oh, hey, they have backups too. Wait, I could just do everything in there. Yeah. And it saves them so much more time when they were just coming in to talk about DR. So there's yeah. a, uh, that's sort of an entry point for customers is talking about DR um, and talking about their cloud and talking about their cloud desires. Um, my favorite yeah. question around cloud is why? Uh, I know that that seems like a really weird question coming from a cloud company, but I like to ask why customers yeah. want to go to the cloud. That's good. Um, that's good stuff. And I, and I think that's a good dovetail into that, that those kind of questions for the CNSG app smart uh, partners is, you know, what are a couple of key things they can be asking for your team and for Devin pre-discovery, like kind of to make sure that this is a good opportunity for Expedient? So when we talk to customers, we want to kind of, we do want to figure out why. Because if customers just say, we want to go to the cloud, why? Well, because it's the cloud. That's not a good, answer. A good answer. That's yeah. a terrible answer. Um, if your response is that you want to get out of your data center, we've had plenty of customers who want to do cloudy things because they just don't want to deal with their data centers anymore. They just don't want to deal with the physical yeah. asset of it. 
um, which can be a benefit, right? Whether that's because they don't want to deal, do, deal with it at all, or they're losing access to it because the building it was in is now owned by a different company and that company is terminating their lease or something like that. There's ways for that to happen where it's not just, you know, a, a willy nilly decision. Um, we also find that a lot of companies are looking for that agility now. They've seen that a number of companies have gone out to the canary. The, the canary has gone down into the mine, down down into the mine, and has come back out. Um, they've been able to do these sorts of things safely, and people have gone in and helped, you know, determine where they need to go, what turns to make, what turns yeah. to not make. So a lot of customers are starting to feel more and more comfortable with the idea of cloud. They're still not entirely sure how to do it. So what we like to do is figure out what, they're, what they have, what they would be moving, and what are their longer term goals to that. Um, and help figure out where these sorts of things need to go. Um, a lot of customers want to just pick all their VMs up and shove them into an AWS, shove them into an Azure. And that's not the, um, that's not the best way to do that. Yeah. That is not the cleanest way to do that. That's a great way to spend a lot of money you don't want to. Um, yeah. What we do is we help bring a predictable model. Our VMs are all done via resource pool. So a customer would, you would sit down with a customer, we would sit down with them and say, okay, how big is your environment? What are you looking to move? Okay, we're, you're looking to move 100 gigs of RAM and five terabytes of storage. Okay, you pay for that 100 gigs of, v, of RAM and that five terabytes of storage every single month. And in doing so, you get the predictable monthly cost. So your CFO, or your CIO is going, okay, great. I'm getting the cloud, but I don't ever have to worry about the big eyeball yeah. you know, bill. And I'm getting all of the resource. I'm making sure that I'm utilizing all of my resources. And at the same time, when I need more, when that next project comes in and says, okay, we actually need another 25 gigs of RAM, we can go out, you can request the resources and get them very quickly versus the very traditional physical resource process of going to your procurement department and saying, we need resources, can we have them now? And yeah. the procurement department has to go buy it, shipping, logistics, racking, cabling, that sort of stuff. Not really, yeah. not really proficient. Not proficient. And it's, it's, that is becoming more and more of a hindrance. Yeah. Um, especially we saw a huge uptick in services in March and in April. Yeah. from customers who are like, we need to have additional things on hand. We need to have additional capabilities to staff up or to scale up our platform for our end users who were previously sitting in an office coming over, say, uh, a, v a single VPN tunnel. Now we have VPN tunnels coming from everywhere. Yeah. So we want to make sure that we have all of those resources available. So by doing that, we're able to scale up all these resources very quickly and meet the needs of our customers when they need it. Not we'll meet the needs of our customers two months later. Yeah. And it's basically a consumption based model. Expedient has, that, that's a differentiator for you and your team. Right. Um, it's, it, it's a consumption based model of a, not, of a very persistent platform. So yeah. a lot of our customers are very traditional VMware shops. They yeah. have paid for the perpetual model and pay every year for support going all the way down the line, but they have to buy additional hosts to make sure that they have availability. They have to license additional hosts for availability. They have to license yeah. DR hosts because they have a DR, they built their own DR platform. All of that can get very expensive and it doesn't line up with what you're actually using. You're usually yeah. in the 70 to 75% range, which means you're paying 25% for stuff you're not using. Yeah. So what we can do is we help, build that in so you have all of the availability without having to pay for 25% additional hosts and licensing and support and maintenance time. You can do all of that inside of our environment and pay at the consumption level. And, and a lot of those CTOs and IT directors, that's what they're asking. He or she is coming to our partners and saying, hey, how can I get this done? What, you know, how can AJ's team help me? I think one of the big things with the partner space, especially when you're talking to customers, is that this is the sort of thing that you've been missing. Um, when we start to actually talk through you know, cloud, I think everybody here recognizes, especially if you've looked at AWS or Azure, is that not everything fits. Yep. Um, and you're kind of having to have really rough conversations with customers around like you don't, they, they want to go all in on AWS. They want to go all in on Azure. Maybe they've got Azure credits and they're, they, they're just staring at it going, this is the thing that we want to do. And you have to have the, the hard conversation that you are going to blow your credits. You are going to spend all of your money. Yeah. You are going to end up using all of the things that you want to 
all of the things that you have that you think are going to make cloud cheaper, you're going to spend it on the stuff you're already running. Yeah. And you're not going to get to use it on the stuff that you actually want to go do. Things like data lakes, big data, AI, ML, um, serverless, all of those things that you think you want to go do, you're going to spend all of your credits on the stuff you're already using because you'll move that first. Yeah. So what we can do is we can help optimize those costs, help figure out a better way to do this. We have direct connections from our data centers to the hyperscalers, low latency, 100 gig connectivity that can actually help you get there faster. So if you want to have a conversation with a customer and they're talking about how they have these 100 VMs on VMware, but they're just going to lift and shift them to AWS so they can access AWS services, we can actually help along the way there and help maintain their existing VMware infrastructure so, they're in, so your, in, your engineers don't have to completely relearn everything on the way to you building you know, and utilizing cloud platforms more effectively. Okay, let's let's wrap this up. So uh, let's talk about resources. We on the CNSG AppSmart side, we have myself, we have uh, Tyler, we have Matt Artie Jr. We have all of our managing partners. We love working with Expedient. Devin Cole is awesome. What are some resources on the Expedient side for our partners? So uh, you can go to Devin. Uh, Devin's always available for CNSG. We also have our partner portal where you can log in, look at a number of different resources. Uh, you can also register deals there, which is the cool part. Yeah. Uh, and you can also reach out to me, uh, aj.cuff at expedient.com. Reach out to me uh, if you've got a, a customer, CC Devin, so she knows that you know we're all having a nice discussion here. But um, reach out to me, and I'm more than happy to you know assist with questions you may have. You know, if you want a deeper explain, a deeper explanation on things. Uh, you can also go to uh, go.expedient.com slash webinar replays. Uh, I did a number of webinars yeah. over uh, a few months from like end of April till July, where we talked through a number of our different products and a number of the different capabilities and live and did demos in them uh, where you can actually go watch those and get a deeper understanding of what we're doing and, and what sort of technologies and where we're helping customers with our individual products set to. So, and so powerful. I, I, I think Devin knows this. I, I was with a cable company for 16 years. My first couple of weeks here, that's how I, I learned about Expedient. The, what, the content you have on YouTube, on Twitter, on, you know, on your site is awesome. And it's really good, you know, starting point to, hey, how can I sell more Expedient? Great stuff. Great stuff. And, and thank you so much for your time today, AJ. We really appreciate it. The whole team at Expedient. We'll see you next time on Provider Smart. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks. Take care.